All right, Kevin, back with you for another episode of the Million Dollar Relationships Podcast. And today, I am here with Majid Mugarabhan. Majid, welcome. So awesome to have you on the show, man. It's a pleasure to be here, Kevin. I'll tell you, this interview has, I mean, man, we were just talking uh, before we hit the record button and and recalling where you and I met. And I'm like, wow, I you know what? I'm I just turned 59 years old a couple couple weeks ago. And at 59, I feel like I'm just now really starting to figure stuff out, really starting to catch my flow. And I'm also realizing how quickly time passes because you and I have known each other since about 2016. So about eight years now. And and we met through our mutual friend, Giovanni Marcico. And uh, and I've actually known Gio for about 12 years. And uh, in fact, I met Giovanni when him and I were in uh, uh, Joe Polish's Genius Network group together. And, and I remember uh, him and I being in New York City at one of Joe's annual events for the Genius Network group. And Gio had invited me to go out to dinner with him. And we went to this really cool restaurant. And and at dinner that night, he shared his vision for this thing that he wanted to create called Archangel, Archangel Academy. And what he was wanting to do was bring together existing entrepreneurs and kind of have them support and serve the up and coming entrepreneurs and even, uh, you know, if they did finance them to be able to participate in the whole experience. And as we sat there at dinner that night and he's sharing his vision, I'm just like, Gio, um, I don't even know what this looks like or what the requirements are, but my gosh, I'm in. And you just let me know where to send the money and I'm in. I totally want to be a part of this. And you look over the last 12 years as at what Giovanni has done with Archangel and Archangel Academy and what is expanded to, it is absolutely phenomenal looking at what he's done and and it's also just like totally inspiring just imagining where he's going with all of this and uh i feel incredibly blessed as i'm sure you probably do just to be along for the ride with him and stuff you know (laughs) and so geo you know uh if you happen to listen to this man thank you so much for just for just being you and doing what you do, because uh, you inspire a whole lot of entrepreneurs, and uh, and yeah, it's pretty awesome, pretty awesome. And so, so with that, uh, Majid, I think what I'd like to do is just kind of like turn it over to you, so we can set a little bit of context here, and we can let the listeners know, you know, who you are what you do, who you serve, what inspires you most about the work that you do and the impact that you're making in the world. So let's just start there. Sure. So, yeah, in 2016, um, I'll give a shout out to Tuan Nguyen, Million Dollar Relationships, uh, because I was telling people, I want to be a professional speaker. I'm a professional speaker. I'm a public speaker. How do I learn this business? Someone said, you got to talk to this guy called Tuan Nguyen. Okay. And I went to this event just because I heard Tuan was there. And I went right up to Tuan and I said, hey, Tuan, listen, I paid $100 to come to this event, but I don't care about the event. I'm here to meet you. <laughs> and he says, all right, let's get lunch after this. So we go out to lunch. He pops open his laptop and he presses play on a video that's an animation called Archangel. Okay. He says, I think you should go to this. And this particular animation says there's all these seven-figure millionaire entrepreneurs coming together to share their mission and change the world. And we're going to let in a few people who weren't quite there yet. And that would have been me. I was probably right around 100,000 in revenue, if that, maybe less. And so I applied. I talked to Giovanni. I came to California. I don't think you and I actually met in person there. That was Long Beach, California, 2016 or so. Um, But what it opened my eyes to were different business models, So at that time, I was thinking in terms of being a professional speaker means you get paid to give a talk. It means you're giving a keynote and you're getting a speaking fee. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And that is a very challenging business because you're competing against celebrities. You're speaking at places that are saying things like, oh, it's good exposure. We don't have a budget, but it'll be good exposure for you. And I'm thinking, come on, how am I supposed to pay my bills with good exposure? Mm -hmm. And the reason is because I just didn't really know how to monetize an audience. So coming into uh, Archangel, I met coaches, consultants, course creators, all these different uh, experts who had many, many different ways of monetizing their knowledge. So that first opened my eyes. Then I met Angela Loria, who was a multi-seven figure book coach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she showed me this business model that she calls front end, back end. Mm -hmm. Front end means the thing you sell them first. Yep. And back end means the thing you sell them after they're done with the first thing. Yep. And so she showed me the numbers. Her program was a $15,000 coaching program uh, to write a book. And then once you're done writing a book, what's the next thing you need help with? Marketing and selling your book and building a business. Mm -hmm. So at the end of her $15,000 program, she had a $35,000 program. And through Archangel, I was able to have conversations with her and learn from her. I even signed up for her program and I would see the numbers and I would go, oh, I got to learn this business model. So, you know, her numbers would be like, okay, let's take, let's take 10 people and they're paying uh, $15,000 each for a coaching program. Already you've made more than my annual income. Sure. sure. I'm already, my mind's blown. Yep. Then out of those 10 people, half of them are going to upgrade plus 35. So that's five times 35 is another 175 on top of the first 150, mm -hmm. right? So we're at a quarter million dollars from 10 people. Yeah. yeah. 10 people signing up for the front end, five of those people signing up for the back end. And then she had built such a machine. She was doing those numbers every month. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, wow, that's amazing. So that's kind of the history. Um, and what I love about these million dollar relationships, Kevin, is, um, you know, we can kind of do like a family tree. So I met this person through Angela. I met Angela through Gio. I met Gio through Tuan. So we kind of had this like, you know, relationship tree. Um, but in fact, it was um, when I was getting ready for this podcast, Kevin, thinking about who are my million dollar relationships, which is who are the people who have inspired a million dollars of revenue in my business? And I'm going to give you credit for one of them. Okay. Okay. So I'll tell you the story when I'm sitting on the beach in Trinidad and Tobago watching the sunset. Mm -hmm. So you and I, we met through uh, Archangel. We got on a couple calls and you said, hey, would you be open to emailing your list to promote a webinar I want to do? And I said, sure. I've never done that before. And I don't know if my list is, you know, big enough. I might have been like 1,500 people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you sent me this Word document that really opened my eyes. There was a Word document that says, email this on day one. This is the subject line, and this is the body of the text. Mm -hmm. On day two, email this subject line with this body of the text. Mm -hmm. And on day three, email this subject line and this body of the text. And the text says... You got to meet my friend, Kevin Thompson. He's wonderful. He can help you with this and that. And I go, wow, well, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> so I just copied and pasted into my MailChimp email thing. And then on the day of the webinar, I got on it just like every other student. And I introduced you to these people who presumably heard about it through my email list. And I sat there and watched the sunset over the beach in Trinidad and Tobago, took notes, you teaching about how to do partnerships and how to create relationships and all this stuff. And then at the end, there was a thousand dollar offer. Mm -hmm. I didn't buy it because I just thought, well, I'm just, I'm here to learn. And I'm one of those here to learn, not buy on that call anyway. Mm -hmm. But then I get an email from you. It says, Hey, guess what? Three people bought the program, a thousand dollars each. I'm going to send you a check for 600 bucks. And when I got home from Trinidad and Tobago, there was your handwriting and your signature on a paper check in the mail, old school. And I thought that must be the easiest 600 bucks I ever made. I sent three emails and watched the sunset while I listened to a master teacher class. Mm -hmm. 
And I took those three emails and I made them mine. And then I went to my friend. In fact, you might have actually been, Kevin, you might have been the first person to promote my webinar. Because I probably called you up and say, wow, Kevin, that was cool. Let's do that for your your audience. And at the time, I think you had like 25,000 people mm-hmm. on an email list. Mm-hmm. So I have used that same formula since uh, that would have been, I think, 2019. Okay. Mm-hmm. Send these three emails and let's get on a webinar together. Mm-hmm. I also joined your program. I forget what you called it, um, but that's how I met Aaron File. Okay. Aaron File was in your mastermind. I was in yep. the same mastermind. That's how I met Mary Beth, mm-hmm. who became a client. Aaron File became a client. And, uh, you know, it's just interesting. Now we're having this conversation eight years later to see all the relationships that come from these initial relationships. And I guess we could both credit it to the fact that we signed up for a mastermind. Yeah. And at the time, uh, it was 5000 U.S. dollars. Which was like big money for me, but now I've you know, I've spent, I've spent twenty and thirty investment. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's it's um, it's cool to trace back our relationships and just it could be as simple as an email with a word document that radically changed my business, and so you kind of helped me change my mindset from I should only speak at places that can pay my fee mm-hmm. as a speaker mm-hmm. to heck I could, I could speak to my computer from the beach and just send an email or send a, you know, a word document with some email templates and make much more money like that. So it really unlocked my ability to travel the world, yeah. to launch courses, to launch new offers because of this, joint venture webinar strategy that I learned from you. That is so awesome. And that, you know, well, first of all, kudos to you, Majid, for, you know, yeah. seeing a bu- business model that you're like, oh, you know what, man, this is totally in alignment with me. And I could make this my own for offering my products and services. And yeah. You know, I mean, I, I I look back at those days when I was doing those webinars, and and we actually we we started in the early days doing teleseminars because webinars weren't even a thing yet. And uh, but uh, you know, I I ran that publishing company for a twelve year period, and over the course of that twelve years, we sold sixteen point one million dollars worth of that training that I did, and I did almost four hundred strategic partnerships in that 12 years with people like yourself ranging mm-hmm. in like all very like you said you you by comparison with some other people might have had a very a smaller list of people you know and then i you know i, I think my biggest partner well, it was my biggest partner it was uh, uh uh bill harris uh bill harris founded a company called center point research institute he has since passed away center point research is still around though uh, but when Bill was alive, him and I became very close friends. And uh, I, I sent him the same three email sequence I sent you. And he was like, well, he's like, this is great, Kevin. I'm going to send one. And I'm like, all right. I said, you do whatever you feel is right. But he sent one. And we did that training for his folks. And uh, the the end result from that was $186,000 in revenue from that same training. Dip, with bills on it. <laughs> so depending on who, but the thing is, here's the thing is like, we value all of our partners. We don't just value the ones that we can get the big results with. We value all of our partners and stuff. We, we place, and like you, you mentioned Mary Beth, my gosh. I mean, I met Mary Beth for the first time ever August of 2017, I I had held an event right here at my home, right on the other side of this wall, and she flew across the country and attended that event here at my home, her her and 14 other entrepreneurs. And, you know, through you doing what you do, because at some point, Mary Beth told me that she's like, Kevin, I would really like to start doing public speaking. I'm like, well, if you want to do public speaking, Majid is the guy that you need to talk with about that because he can totally help you with that. And so, 
you know, she she didn't invest in just a low end course or training that you put out. She she invested in you in getting in person support. I mean, I think she came and attended an event and a training yeah. and, and did a bunch of stuff with you as a result yeah. of that. You know, yeah. And uh, and to this day, Maj- or, uh, excuse me, Ma- Mary Beth. She is a client of mine. I talk to her regularly to this day. And that we're, that we're, well, 2017, so seven years later, her and I are still in communication regularly yeah. with each other. Yeah. You know? And uh, I mean, what, what, what a testament to the power of relationships and being of value and being of service to those in our sphere of influence and stuff. Yeah. And so if you look... <clears throat> At these relationships. So you've mentioned Gio, you've mentioned Tuan, you've mentioned myself. So what is, I want to look at what is an example of a situation where you got to make a really big impact, where even you were like going, wow, that was so awesome. And, and you know, hands down, that would have never happened if not for your relationship with whoever. It was myself, Gio, or Tuan. What's an example? Of something like that well now i'll share something that comes to mind um i have taken uh to the art of throwing great parties okay you and yes. <laughs> um i've been asked to officiate a wedding in paris in october wow uh, because i threw the party where they met and fell in love in austin awesome. yeah um so just what's coming to mind to share with me is uh, to share with you is that creating events and creating experiences and knowing some of the elements that accelerate connection and um, relationships has become something I've learned from Giovanni. I've learned it from you. Uh, you know, there's there's building the human connection. And I love how you and I, we always start our conversations, even today before we press record, but something really real yeah. in our lives. Um, but then we also look at creating value and creating value has to do with um, understanding how to solve people's problems. And, you know, when I get on a call with someone or if I'm meeting someone, I don't say, what can I do for you? Because it's hard to answer that question because they don't know what I can do. They don't know what I want to do. Like, what do you mean? That's not the right question. The The more effective question is what's your biggest challenge right now or what's keeping you up at night these days? And now I can apply, who do I know in my network? What advice or skills can I apply to that challenge? So people say the phrase like, you know, add value, be valuable. What does that really mean? My definition is it's solving problems for people. And the way to solve problems for people is to understand what their problems are. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. In that's- this case, in this case, my friend Brandon, uh, I knew he was single. Now, I, I didn't I didn't actually set him up personally. They just happened to bump into each other and, and get to know each other. But, you know, as a single guy looking for love, that's a real valuable, um, you know, it's a big part of your life. And when you can provide uh, a result like a relationship turning into a marriage, you know, both of them feel a huge debt of gratitude to me. Um, and I feel honored to be a big part of their life for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is so powerful right there. And like what you said, you know, you, you threw the party. Um, it, it wasn't for the specific purpose of introducing these two people, but yet the natural and organic byproduct of you throwing that party was that these two people met. And now they're getting ready to get married. And, you know, it's really because like, I, I look at my own life, especially my life as an entrepreneur. For, for many years, I was very strategic and tactical, trying to do certain things like you talked about that, you know, OK, I want to get speaking engagements where people will compensate me to come and speak. And, and what you found out was like, you know, there's better ways of doing this that are more in alignment with who I am and how I want to show up and how I can best be valuable to others. Yeah. And yeah. I used to be, even in facilitating relationships, I used to be 
way more strategic and way more tactical, trying to be like, oh, I want to get so-and-so in with this person. And because, you know, if I did that, oh, I could, that would be really good. And now I never do none of that shit. Jeez. Um, all I do is I am really clear on who would I even extend an invite to. I, I host these virtual roundtables, and, and I'm really clear on who I will extend an invite to. And so the only people that I will extend an invite to is the already well-established entrepreneur who uh, they are beyond the place in their business of needing to create cash flow for sustainability. They've done that, and now their focus is on how do I use my business to make my biggest impact in the world? And on the other side of the coin, they are just giving generous people. That's how they show up. They couldn't show up any other way than they always just show up. How do I contribute? How do I help? How do I serve? How do I pour into other people using my experience and expertise? And, and like I said, they couldn't show up any other way. And when you get those people together, uh, I'll tell you what, what organically unfolds is so much bigger, so much more expansive than anything that I could possibly try to tactically or strategically put into place, you know, just letting yeah. it happen, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and granted, it takes, it takes having a format. It's, it is all about curating the right people, all of that kind of stuff. But beyond that, uh, just to be able to let go a little bit, let, you know, not be so in control, but, but let, let's, let's dance, let's party, let's collaborate and co-create with God, the universe, whatever you want to call it. And, and let God and the universe have their role too. And let yeah. us just kind of be the vessel that helps facilitate that. Yeah. I'll share with you something interesting, Kevin. Um, I've moved into this uh, historic mansion 150 year old Italian style mansion, three stories. And it just begs for parties to be thrown. That's why I've moved here to be the <laughs> steward of this mansion. And the first two parties I threw were classic. Officially, the time starts at nine o'clock at night, okay. but unofficially, people arrive, you know, 10, 11, 12, you know, and it goes. And we had DJs and people, I don't drink alcohol, but people bring alcohol, right? So by the end of the night, everyone's pretty drunk and some people are doing some dumb shit and I'm trying to, you know, get people out of the house. Um, and then the second one, it was a rager and, you know, sa same thing. And this last one, I just threw one last weekend. I thought, I wonder what will happen if I make a couple of changes. One is I changed the timing. Instead of starting at nine o'clock, it starts at two o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Okay. Secondly, so you're just having an experiment here now. Yes. Secondly, I'm going to ask everybody to wear all white. Mm -hmm. You heard of these all white parties before? Mm -hmm. Looks great on photos. I never had one before. Um, it just, I don't know. So what I, what I kind of felt is like it creates a connection and creates this like sense of like, we're uniform, yeah. you know? And the fact that it was in the day, and I called it a garden party. So we had like an outdoor scene. The whole vibe was different. Mm -hmm. No alcohol, none of the none of the like downsides and risky behavior of alcohol. And so it made me think about, you know, there's so many levers and knobs we can pull as experienced designers, mm -hmm. including what time, including dress code, including who we're inviting, who we're not inviting. This is one of the most interesting concepts from this book called The Art of Gathering. If you haven't read it, it's a good one. The mo one of the most interesting concepts was gatherings are about who is invited, but it's also about who is not invited. Yeah. yeah. You know, like are kids invited or not? Mm -hmm. um, and so you were mentioning like I, I have these you have these roundtables that you know, only established entrepreneurs. And you get to you get to define what that means. So I think, you know, we both. Uh, our artists in a way and how we kind of curate these experiences and I'm really proud of this last one that I did because uh, again a new relationship has formed a man and a woman didn't know each other they're dating now and they just wow. fell in love and I literally say on a microphone I say the conditions are perfect for falling in love mm -hmm. that that's a pretty good yeah yeah 
if somebody's looking for that, that's a pretty good invitation, right? There. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to steer us over to a concept I think uh, I, I'd like to share with you. So back to kind of being a speaker. Okay. Speaking to conferences, you know, speaking to audiences. One of the thing, one of the concepts I think you'll appreciate is that I think of my speech not as a 60 minute performance. I think of this engagement as the beginning of potentially a lifelong relationship with this community. And when I think of it like that, it's not like I'm, you know, doing a road show, I'm getting out of the tour bus, I'm doing my shtick, I'm getting back on the tour bus and going to the next town. But it's like I'm doing as much as I can to understand the community and its challenges, hopes and dreams. So that when I am given the privilege of their attention for a short period of time, 60 minute keynote, for example, my wish and my intention is that this is the beginning of our relationship and our relationship may continue by you subscribing to my email list or following me on social media or inviting me back to the next conference. But the mindset of this is the beginning of a relationship and the mindset of this is the beginning of a relationship with a network of people has really served me as a speaker. When I speak to a group, I'm thinking about long-term relationships, not a 60 minute presentation. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, when when we think of it, cause like I'm, I'm the same way. I, I, I love talking with entrepreneurs. I love having conversations with them about what they're working on, what's got them jazzed up, what they're fired up about, uh, what their challenges are, what their problems are. Because like you, I just default to who do I know that might be able to help with this kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And I love having those conversations. And, mm -hmm. and I'm always just looking at how can I potentially be of service to this person? Mm -hmm. And and more importantly, I just want to give them a, a an experience where they feel seen, heard, and understood. And 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 it's really e easy to give that experience because all we do is we ask questions of them, and then imagine this: we actually listen when they're sharing back with us, not with the intent of. I'm waiting for the next time or trying to strategize what I'm going to say next, but just listening and then asking clarifying questions based on what they just shared. Yeah, no. Kevin, what I'm hearing you say is that we listen not just to wait to respond, but we listen to really hear them. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. exactly. There we go. <laughs> so, that was good. So Kevin, uh, we're, on, we're on the Million Dollar Relationship Podcast. So I'm going to I'm going to give you a name called million dollar listening. And that's an adaptation for what I what I usually call it I call it thousand dollar listening, but you can call it million dollar listening. And this is my definition of thousand dollar listening is imagine you're on a game show and you're listening to someone talk and at any point in the conversation the host of the game show can press pause and ask the speaker, "Do you feel like he's paying attention?" Do you feel like he's listening? Do you feel like he understands you? And if the guest on the guest on the show, the speaker, says yes, then you, the contestant on the game show, gets handed a thousand dollars of cash. Okay. So if you can imagine a scenario where the speaker, they're feeling understood or seen, or they're feeling like you're paying attention, and then you can win a prize. Imagine how much better of a listener you would be. Yeah. yeah. Now realize the truth is we're always in the thousand dollar listening. When we're in business, we're in sales. When we're in a relationship, this is how clients are formed. Because when a client feels so heard and understood, they decide you're the one I want to work with because you get me. You understand my situation. So you can call that million dollar listening because you will be in conversations where if you're listening well, you'll make a million dollars. And if you're not paying attention because you're waiting to respond or thinking how you would wait, you know, how you would say things differently and being distracted, you're going to miss out on the deals. Yeah. 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 And you know, this, this can be done in real time conversation when we're standing right in front of somebody, it can be done on like zoom like this. 
This can be done via text message or Facebook messenger message too, just communicating with people in that way. And I'll tell you, you know, I have been doing this for years and I have heard on lots of occasions how, I mean, I, I did, Nick Lucas is a guy that I interviewed really early on for this podcast. He's, he was like the first five that I interviewed. And I knew Nick because him and I originally met in 2015 when he and I were in Kevin Nation's family mastermind group together. And when we were on the podcast, he told me during the course of the interview, he said, Kevin, he said, I will never forget that conversation that you and I had at one of Kevin's meetings where, and, and, I, and he t- kind of shared some about it, but I did not remember that conversation at all, Majit, because, mm. you know, it was like eight, nine years ago, but he totally remembered that and how that conversation made him feel and stuff. And he's like, Kevin, he's like, I have always remembered that conversation and I have just always appreciated you for just giving me, just, just hearing me out and listening because that was what I really needed in that moment. And you just gave that to me. Mm. And, you know, when, when, I mean, it, when we give people that gift of feeling seen, heard, and understood. That's what causes them to be like, you know what? I want to spend a whole lot more time with Kevin. I want to spend a whole lot more time with Majid. It's because of how we make them feel. And like these people that come to your parties and this most recent party experience that you had, I'm betting that there's people there, other people that had like a pretty awesome experience. So like, you know what? If Majid invites me back, I'm going again. <laughs> you know, if you interviewed all my um, party attendees, what did you think of the party? My guess is they would say really good people, really good energy. One of the things I do is I get everybody seated. Um, I serve cacao, which is kind of this like spiritual heart opening. It's like hot chocolate, but people make a big deal of how it's like opens your heart up called cacao. And then I get everybody to pair up with someone they don't know and look into their eyes for a really long time. And I tell them, look at the left eye, look at the person's left eye. They'll look at your left eye. And then I'm talking to them about the significance of the left eye. And then I put them into the right eye and right eye. And by the end of like three minutes of eye gazing, the whole vibe of the whole party is different. Wow. And the other thing I can tell you is that I time to have a private conversation with each person during the party. And it's one of these like catching up, like what's going on in your life. And then we go a little bit deeper. So like, how are you really doing? How are you doing? Uh, you know, I ask questions like, there's a question I ask about the past and there's a question I ask about the future. So the question I ask about the past is, uh, what have you learned in the last 90 days? Um, or what are you most proud of from the last 90 days? And sometimes we'll get over like, well, those two questions will, will kind of help people think of a challenge that they overcame. Okay. So overcome, overcoming adversity, there's lessons learned and it's something you could be proud of, <clears throat> but also by sharing an adversity, it's kind of showing a wound a little bit. Like it's, a, it's maybe it's a scar now because you overcame it, but like, what challenge did you overcome in the last 90 days that you're really proud of? Or what challenge did you overcome in the last 90 days that, that you learned a lesson and what was the lesson that you learned? So that's question about the past. Question about the future. What are you most excited about? Or what are you most looking forward to over the next 90 days? And now I have kind of a shared vision, shared understanding of what they've gone through. Yep. Yep. And what's coming next. Yep. And then one of my last questions is always, is there anything I can do right now to support you? And those conversations are, are really fulfilling for me because it really like reactivates the, it brings the relationship to the present moment. Yeah. Because all, all these people I'm, are, you know, people from my past. And now I might be talking to a whole new person because maybe I haven't seen them in a few months. Sure. Sure. I like geeking out about uh, relationship creation with you, Kevin. You're a master, and, and I, uh, I love it. 
Well, I'll tell you, I have really appreciated this conversation. And and I'm sure there's a lot of people listening to this going, man, Kev, um, I really like Majid. I really like the way he shows up. And man, maybe I, I want to learn more about these parties that he hosts. And, stuff. <laughs> and so for anybody who's thinking about anything like that, Majid, uh, how can they best get a hold of any, any websites, any resources that we can share with them? <clears throat> Well, if you search my name, Majid Mogarabon, on Facebook and Instagram, you'll get me there. My website is expertspeaker.com, where I help people grow their business through public speaking. And I wrote a book that walks you through step-by-step -step how to do that. It's called Expert Speaker, Five Steps to Grow Your Business with Public Speaking. And you can get it for free at expertspeakerbook.com. Okay. As far as my parties... Um, I just finished my last event yesterday. In fact, I still have one guest in the other room who missed her flight and she's got a delayed oh, flight up tomorrow. But um, I don't have things planned now. I'm, I'm entering a very interesting phase. I'm moving out of this mansion and I don't know where I'm going to end up, but I have a feeling it's somewhere around the world. I'm going to do a bit of a world tour. And part of my vision, Evan, is to bring these parties and experiences to other people's places because I love traveling. So I'll pick a place and I'll say, who's going to be my co-host? And we'll create something really extraordinary there. So I would say the best best chance of getting an invitation to the next one is follow me on social media and okay. send me a message. Tell me you want to come to the next party and I'll make sure you get invited. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to have this conversation, Majid. Uh, any, I just want to make sure, any, any last thing you feel led to share before we call it a wrap? Hmm. Well, I suppose so. Um, yeah, I'm so intentional with my relationships. I have a spreadsheet called Majid's Actual Real Friends. Okay. And it's a list of 85 people. And then there's two more columns. One is, what do I appreciate about this person? And what do I want this relationship to become? Okay. And I revise this every year. Okay. And what I found is that I've, I've become a collector of relationships because, you know, 5,000 friends on Facebook, that's the limit. I hit that limit way long time ago. And, you know, 100,000 followers here and there. And, you know, it's not always about the quantity, but the quality and the quality of relationships comes down to the intention and choosing who you want to be in those close circles. And I would say for most people, the the, the inner circle of friends is probably more like five people and not 85 people. Um, but deciding what you appreciate about that person and what you want the relationship to become and just writing that down is so powerful to be clear in why you want these relationships yeah amen yeah. Ab absolutely and you know this whole thing of uh you know what we what we focus on what we appreciate appreciates you know you know john, john ruland who i know you knew uh you know passed away recently but that's one of the things that john used to say all the time you know what we appreciate on appreciates jesse elder also says that a lot and uh when we do focus on appreciating the people in our lives for no other reason than for just who they are. And, and I'll tell you, you know, showing that no matter who somebody is, no matter how successful they are, no matter how big of a business right they run, how great things appear from the outside looking in, there's not a person on the face of this earth that gets too much genuine appreciation. And, and just being that person who is actively engaged in appreciating others. Uh, man, I'll tell you what, you, you talk about creating solid relationships, active appreciation, genuine appreciation. That's, that is the, such a great starting point right there. And Majid, so thank you again for taking the time to have this conversation. I am really excited to get this out there and share it with a lot of other people, other, other entrepreneurs. I know it's going to be really impactful. I know we're going to just really, you know, inspire them 
to place an intentional focus on creating more real, meaningful, rewarding, and profitable relationships in their own life. So thanks again. Appreciate you, man. You too, Kevin. Take care.